Hello and welcome to Calculus Tutorial. I believe this is the last topic of the year. And as you can see, volume grew. No pun intended. Um, so, we've done the washer and the disk method. But there is one more you can see I added here um, of known cross sections. So, so far when we did the disk and washer method, we were always working with circles. And so we did the integrals of pi r squared. Well, what if your cross-section is not a circle from a rotation? And so we're not going to be rotating anything anymore. We're just going to be building certain cross-sections. So let's take a look at that. So here we have a region, and we're going to build cross-sections off of it. So not a circle this time. Um, but instead of a circle, we're going to do squares. So first, a quick visual of what this might look like um, with a bad drawing. So we're going to take the distance between these two curves and turn that into a square, just because I'm choosing a square first. Sorry for my bad three-dimensional drawing, but there it is. Um, when the distance between these two curves gets smaller, the square will get smaller. All right, so what will that actually look like? Let me show you here. So here is our same region. We're going to take the distance between the two curves and turn it into a square. And so that will look something like this. There we go. Let's see if I can get the two curves back on here. There we go. So you can send we we take the distance between the two curves and then that is turned into a square that builds up a shape. And so you can you take as the distance between the two curves gets bigger, the square, of course, also gets bigger. All right. And as the square gets bigger, the shape gets bigger. And we get an interesting looking three dimensional shape there. You can see the square cross sections again. So even though it squares, it is has quite the nice curve to it um, because the squares gradually and gradually get bigger or smaller. Now, what does that mean for the math? Well, before, we would take the integral of pi r squared uh, dx or dy because we were doing rotations. And when you do a rotation, you get a circle. And so hopefully you can see the area of a circle right there. Well, if we are doing square cross sections, volume will then be the integral of the volume, or sorry, the area of a square, which is just side squared. And it could be dx or dy. Uh, some other shapes you could do is a triangle. So you would take the integral of the area of a triangle, base times height, divided by 2, dx, or dy, whichever way it needs to be. Um, let's see, what's another popular one? A half circle. So you get kind of a dome-looking thing. So then your volume, because it's a circle, you're again going to do pi r squared. But because you're doing a half circle, you divide that by 2. So you could do any um, geometric shape you want, actually. You just take the integral of that area, and that will give you the volume of that shape when you build up those cross sections. So let's see what that looks like with some math, now that we kind of have an idea of what the concept is. These shapes are even weirder. 
And so it gets really hard to visualize what they look like. Um, so you just kind of have to do the math. So let's start with squares. So we are going to find, uh, we're going to take the region bound by F and G, and we're going to find the volume of a solid with square cross sections perpendicular to the X axis. So then when I draw my square, it needs to be perpendicular to the X axis. So I'm going to turn that into a square. So your cross section is going to look like this. What is the area? Well, you take your side and your side and you multiply them. They're the same or length times width, but they're the same. So your area is equal to side squared. And we are going to take the integral of that side squared. And because we are perpendicular to the x-axis, that means these squares are going to be going this way. So hopefully you can see we are going to eventually add up the squares side to side. So we are doing this with respect to x. But again, the variables don't match. So what is the length of this side? Well, that is the distance from the top function to the bottom function, big minus small. So we're going to take the big function and subtract the small function. So our side is going to equal, now let's see, which one is which? This is going to be a negative function, so I'm guessing that's the upside down one. And this is going to be 2x squared. Just think if you distribute that, you'll have a 2x squared, which is a quadratic, which will be a right side up parabola. So it looks like that one's g and that one's f. So our side is going to be f minus g. So our integral becomes the side squared, where our side is f of x minus g of x dx. Uh, from where to where? It certainly looks like they start at 0. And so if I plug in 0, we do in fact get 0. And if we plug in 0, we do in fact get 0. So that one looks good. Where do they cross again? Um, it looks like they're going to cross at 1, because if I plug in 1, we get 0. And if we plug in 1, we get 0. So we're going from 0 to 1. Now, yes, I could plug in this whole thing for f, and I could plug in this whole thing in for g. But because they have nice names already, I don't really need to. I'm just going to leave the integral like that and call it good. If I need to find the value, I would simply plug that into the calculator. Put this into f1, put this one into f2, and then you can just use the function names in this exact same integral format. Um, otherwise, this gets really long if you try to write all the functions in your formula. But that will give us the volume of this shape that has square cross sections. All right, let's see if we can do one with something a little bit more complicated than a square. Let's do a half circle. Okay, so again, I'm not going to draw the three-dimensional picture here. You don't really need it. But we're going to take this region enclosed by these two graphs. Hopefully it looks familiar. Um, and we're going to use half circle cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis. So I'm going to go perpendicular to the x-axis. That gives me this distance right here. I'm not going to draw all the way down, but we are perpendicular to the x-axis. And turn that into a half circle. So if you want to kind of see that in a couple of different places, half circle, half circle. All right, so our area is pi r squared divided by 2. So what is the radius? Well, first we know the diameter. The diameter is the distance from this function to that function. So the top one 
is g the linear and the bottom one is the quadratic is f. So the diameter is g minus f. But of course the radius is half the diameter. So our radius is g minus f divided by 2. And so that we have to plug in for our radius. So area is equal to pi times the radius squared divided by 2, where our uh, radius is g of x minus f of x divided by 2. Uh, that's getting a little cumbersome to write, so you might as well um, rewrite that a little bit. So let's combine these denominators. So 2 squared is 4, and then that 4 can come down here with that denominator and become an 8. So that is going to be 1 8 pi times g of x minus f of x and that part is still squared. We are going to take the integral. So you can see that our uh, half circles are going side to side. So this is going to be a dx. And we're going to be going from 0 to 4 of 1. Actually, the 1 8th pi can go on the outside, can't it? 1 8th pi times g of x minus f of x squared. So again, that looks pretty complicated with all the steps, but we are just taking the integral of an area formula. All right, bare bones, that's what we're doing. So let's take a look at one more, the hardest one, I think. Uh, half circles and squares aren't too bad. I think triangles can sometimes be the worst. So let's take a look at an isosceles right triangle, actually one of the easiest triangles to do. So let's take the same region, not complicate things too much. Um, it's a, the base is an isosceles right triangle for our cross sections with the leg of each cross section perpendicular to the y-axis. All right, so we are going perpendicular to the y-axis this time. So from here to here, make sure you're perpendicular to the y-axis. But now I'm turning that into an isosceles right triangle. So here's my isosceles. Those two are the same. Right triangle. Okay, so we have an isosceles right triangle. Um, the leg, those are the two sides that are the same, is in the region, so this is one of the legs. There we go. Now what is the area of an isosceles right triangle? Well thankfully the base and the height are going to be the same because it's isosceles. So I'm just going to use S for side, S for side, it's going to be the same. Base times height is side squared, but because it's a triangle, you have to divide by 2. So we're going to take the integral of S squared divided by 2. Or pull the 1 half out in front, and we're going to do half of the integral of S squared. Uh, let's see, which direction are these triangles going? Well, if I drew another one from here to here, okay, and I keep drawing them in over and over, hopefully you can see that these horizontal lines are going up. We are going from here all the way to there. So this is going to be the integral with respect to y. Well, what is that side's length? Well, the side is equal to the big 
minus the small. So big X minus little x. So the big X value comes from the quadratic. And the little x value comes from the linear. Well, the linear is nice and easy because y is equal to x. So we can just substitute in y for x. But the big X is not so simple. We again have to solve for that. Let's see, I've got some room over here. So y is equal to 1 fourth x squared. And we need the y val or we need the x value so we can get rid of the x's. So multiply by 4, square root both sides. So we get x is equal to the square root of 4y. That is the large x distance. So the square root of 4y minus y is our side. That will give us this distance right here. So our volume then becomes 1 half times the integral of side squared, where our side is the square root of 4y minus y, with our dy and the limits from where to where. I think I already talked about that. From 0 all the way up to 4. We've done this equation a lot. There is our volume. And of course, if you actually needed a number, you could plug that into your calculator and turn just the y's into x's. The number will be the same. So before we always had the question, what is the radius? That question changes a little, a little bit now because it might not be a radius, but it is still some distance. And you use a lot of the same strategies, big minus small. All right, that, I promise, is the end of volume. Now that you can do cross sections of any shape you want, um, it is a very, very large topic, and we are done with it.